Hey everyone, welcome back to Pizza Garage. Let's continue assembling our engine. We will rebuild the oil pump and install the oil pan. Alright, rebuilding your oil pump is fairly simple. You just take off the screws on the bottom. Take off the bottom plate. Now when you look at the bottom plate here, just wipe this off. You can see how it wears. You can see how the oil pump wears the gears, the gears inside here. Uh, just kind of wear into this plate and you can feel a lip in there and if this is indeed the original oil pump it's in pretty good shape but even though it's uh, in good shape I got new parts I got a new plate thank you to Phil Harris from Fairborn Studebaker in Ohio he's helped me out a lot, helped me out a lot with some parts for this uh, for this engine so I got a new plate and I also have two new gears so the new gears for the replacement once I take these apart. Okay. Now these gears should just fall right out like that. And uh, you got to say these these look pretty good. These are actually fairly fairly good shape. When you look at the uh, the teeth, the way they're meshing, they're really not that bad. And this one, really good shape. So here's the replacement. I mean, you can almost tell which one's the old one, which one's the new one. It's hard to tell. It's in such good shape. But even still, we are going to take and put the new gears in here. I'm going to press out this pin inside, uh, and I'm going to change that pin. I'm going to clean up the the body. I'm going to blast this to clean it up, and then uh, we'll assemble it and check our clearances. Here's the oil pump all cleaned up. Now, first to answer a bunch of questions before I even get them. Uh, yes, I did get some video lighting to make it easier to see what I'm doing. Looks a lot better. So anyway, I got my, my pin driven in. That's for the center pin for the gear. And I have my new gear. And there really isn't an up or down with these. So these should go in. Oh, but I want to show you. Anyway, if you look inside here, you can see how the pump wears. You can see on the inside wall that the um, the pump is going to wear where the gears rub against the side of the wall. So I'm going to put these two gears in here. All right. Now you got to check the clearance and the clearance between the gear and the bottom of the plate. And since there is no gasket that goes in here, you have to make sure the clearance is pretty close. So the way you check that is, I'll do my best, let's see what I can do here. Prop this up, like that. Is, you want to check the clearance between the gear and what would be the bottom face, and the max clearance is seven thousandths. So I'm going to take my seven thousandths, I'll have my seven thousandths uh, gauge, and I'll go like this, I'll just put a so I can't even get my seven thousands. I got a straight edge here. I'm just putting my straight edge across, and no, I can't get it. Can't get that in there. So I know that my housing is not worn out. Okay, but let's see what what it goes down to. I'll see how much. I'll just go down to one thousandths right away, and we'll see what we got. Start at two. Let's see if I got two. Okay, got about two. Yeah. Two there, two. So I have two. So I have less than seven, but at least two. So I do have some clearance. So that's good. Now the next thing you gotta check is the clearance between the gear and the side wall. And the max clearance is five thousandths. So I will come in here and just check real quick. And get see if I can get my two thousands in there. And the, the, there is a, a couple different ways to do this, and I can get a two thousandths in there. Um, one way to do this is to put a five thousand shim on each side and try and turn the gears. And if you turn the gears, you got too much. Total is ten thousandths. So I'm just checking right now with two, and uh, I can get two in there. So let's just check. Let's see, the max is 10. Let me just try a 6 and see what happens. 
and I can't really get a six in there. So it's at least two, less than six, and it's pretty close. So now, one thing. Since this is a gear style pump, and when it starts turning, it's got to work up some vacuum in order to draw oil into the pump through the pickup tube and into the engine. It's going to take a little bit to get that going. So, you can pre-prime these pumps with some petroleum jelly. And it just has some regular petroleum jelly here. You can just sort of pack it in the gears like that. And what that will do is, it'll create immediate suction and it'll close the gap between the gears so as soon as it starts turning it'll create a vacuum immediately and you'll have oil sucked up into the pickup tube right away so if you just put some grease in there or some uh, petroleum jelly in there like that it pre-primes your your uh, oil pump now I can just take my so again you can see the old old cover and the new cover the new cover's got a, a, a ground side and just a cast side, so I want the the ground side to go down, and I can just put my bolts back in. All right, I'm ready to put my oil pump on. A couple things first: um, the studs that were in this engine, there's there's studs for the oil pump, uh, and this is one of the studs. It's a 5 16 18 to a 5 16 24 thread stud. And I changed those to this uh, harder metal stud because these can get very brittle. And as I was checking them out to make sure they are okay, one of them broke. So if the uh, studs are left in there and they're old, these type of fasteners are just regular steel, they can break. So I replaced it with this type of stud with the hex on the top so I can get a nice, uh, nice torque on it make sure it's nice and tight. All you have to do is put your gasket on and I have a little gasket sealer, a little um, of my uh, high tack on there, red high tack. And all you're trying to do here is you're not trying to glue this together so you don't need a ton. You just have to seal this because as the pump sits on here, this is the highest pressure point for your oil pressure. And if this isn't sealed right, you'll have oil blowing out the side here and you'll be losing pressure. So I just put that on. I have, I have a little bit of perma, uh, high tack on my oil pump and I just put it on there and I know I can put my my, my uh, nuts the nuts on and the lock washers the reason I like changing these studs is because number one you get a nice lead on there it makes it easy to put the the nut on and uh, you got a lot of room there to uh, to torque down uh, now with the oil pump on the block the bolts on the bottom of the oil pump after rebuilding these get torqued down to 30 foot pounds now for some oil pan repair, if you recall I have these dimples here from the screws being pushed in too hard on the cork gasket and I have to hammer these down and it's pretty easy to do, you just back up your flange with a piece of metal I have a body hammer, I can just work really slow and you see you can just hammer down those dimples pretty quick just like that and then I can focus on getting the entire rail nice and straight alright it's time to put our oil pan on and since the gaskets are already on the bottom for the oil pan rail uh, I gotta put these cork gaskets on the front and the rear now a couple things about these gaskets uh, first of all you can see it's wider than the groove it has to go in in the, in the rear main cap so it's designed that way so you when you push it in and you compress it, it fits in there. That's the way that's designed. Secondly, the ends, if you notice, if you look at each end, they're cut on an angle. So this is an angle, this would be straight, this is an angle. It's cut on an angle so that when you turn it and it goes around the curve of the cap, that the this end sits flat on the pan rail, not on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bead of my great stuff in here and um, 
Then, I'm sorry, right stuff. I'm going to put the right stuff bead in here. Then I'm going to put the gasket in place and slowly work it, work it into the groove and get it all the way in there. Now before you put your oil pan on, it's your last chance to check. Rotate it, make sure everything's working right. Everything is fastened correctly. You have, uh, there's nothing in there obviously you want to make sure. And I have a bead of my right stuff all the way around the outside of the oil pan. Uh, and I want to show you that I'm using the paper gasket here instead of the cork type gasket because the cork type gaskets are the ones that will dry out over time and they'll crush and, and then allow you to um, over tighten your oil pan. Now you do have the cork gasket on the front and the back. You can't get away from that. So you want to uh, put some RTV on there or the right stuff, whatever sealant you're using to make sure you get a good seal. Now when these gaskets come, the front and rear cork gaskets, they may be on the long side. Uh, be careful when you cut them. You don't want to cut these too short. You don't rather, it's better off to have it a little bit long and have a little bulge in the middle here like this so that when you put it down it compresses that gasket. It's going to shrink. You don't want to leave it short. So don't cut those gaskets if you don't have to. Now if it's excessively long, obviously. But you want to keep it as, uh, as it came. Now when I put my oil pan on, and my oil pan, it's black just because I sandblasted it and put some primer on it to make sure it wouldn't rust. And I have my oil tube here that's got to line up on the opposite side here. So I'm just going to set this in place. And I am slowly going to work this all down into position and start to put my bolts in. Alright, oil pan's in place. I actually had to go around the entire oil pan several times, at least five, to make sure they are all equally tight as I went around. Because as you tighten these down, you're going to start to crush the gasket, crush out your seal, and crush out all your stuff. And you got to keep going around until they're all tight. Probably one more time before I uh, run it, I'll just make sure they're all tight. But you got to go around several times to make sure they're all tight. Now I can now I can flip it over and we can work on the top side. So when I turn the engine upright, I always like to put tape on the intake manifold holes and the oil distributor hole. I put tape on any hole where something could accidentally be dropped in. And if you've ever done that, you know how frustrating it is. So if you put some tape over those holes, you don't have to worry about it. So as we have this turned over now, we'll continue on with putting in our check valve. And the oil pressure check valve goes right in this hole right here. And it's comprised of basically a plunger. And this is the old one, a plunger and a spring. And all this really does is it goes in the hole here and as the pressure goes over 50 PSI it pushes, there's a little hole here so the pressure builds up, pushes the plunger out of the way and it allows lubrication to go over the timing gear. So I bought, I have, I have a kit for replacing that so I have a new plunger and I am simply going to put some put some motor oil on it. The same oil I'm going to use to break it in, I'm going to slide the plunger in there. And a new spring and uh, if, if you're having uh, oil pressure problems, the last thing you want to do is you don't want to take the spring and stretch it out and try and increase your oil pressure. That's not good. Just get a new spring. And of course we have the bolt. And the bolt has a new washer. And it just goes on there like that. And you screw it in. That has a copper crush washer on there so you don't have to crank this down with uh, 800 foot-pounds as you do that. 35 to 40 foot-pounds is enough. Okay, now our oiling system is complete. Oil pump, oil pan, and our oil pressure check valve. Now all we have to do is the front of the engine, the water pump, fuel pump, and do our intake manifold and rebuild the carburetor. And we're almost ready to get this baby started. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.